Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And also with you. A very warm welcome to you on this feast of St. Thomas the Apostle. Uh, if you're here for the first time, especially welcome. If you're here regularly, welcome again. And if you're watching at home, welcome to you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. We run the race set before us, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Therefore, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely, bringing them to Jesus in penitence and faith. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through the negligence, through the weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. <coughs> strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Glory be to God on earth.
Almighty and eternal God, who, for the firmer foundation of our faith, allowed your holy apostle Thomas to doubt the resurrection of your Son, till word and sight conceived him, grant to us, who have not seen him, that we also may believe, and so confess Christ as our Lord and God, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Habakkuk. I will stand at my watchpost and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it play on tablets, so that the runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time, it speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it, it will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the crowd, their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
pressing the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me, and yet have come to believe. This is the Gospel of the Lord. something extraordinary. One of those memorable moments perhaps when your friends have just said, oh you just missed it. Or when you should have been there. It was absolutely incredible. I still regret missing out as a student over 40 years ago on a Bob Dylan concert that was apparently stunning according to the friends of mine who made it i couldn't get my act together unfortunately quick enough and early enough to go and join the queue for the tickets and when i did they sold out well poor thomas is the man who misses out of course on another extraordinary encounter with the risen <coughs> christ because he was somewhere else and not because he probably had a hangover, as I did, in missing out with Bob Dylan. It was that point in the story, post-crucifixion, with the disciples wondering what to do next. Grieving, hiding away in an upper room, with none of the confidence and reignited hope that is to come. And we have, I think, this wonderfully human account of Thomas, full of doubt and wanting evidence of these unbelievable claims. And there is a real sense, I think, that he just needs to catch up and understand. What Thomas does know is that their encounter with Jesus has certainly changed them. And here is Thomas, today full of incredulity, wanting to see for himself, wanting to believe. And of course it is this refusal to accept the word of others without the evidence of his own eyes that has earned Thomas that most misleading moniker of all time, Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas. That's how we know him. And it's lodged in that Christian imagination almost as the archetypal skeptic. But this moving episode of John's Gospel isn't only about doubt, and I would suggest not mainly about doubt, and it's certainly not about skepticism. It is also about faith. And far from being the odd man out, 
Thomas represents all of us who believe, both in terms of how and what it is that we believe. And the clue that this episode is thought to come at the end of what is thought sometimes to be the original end of the text of St. John's Gospel. And John has quite deliberately used it, in other words, as the climax to his Gospel. I want to take you back to Christmas and that lovely reading that we have at Christmas, which is that majestic prologue. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Well, now he brings his Gospel to a close. Thomas is the first person in the Gospel to address Jesus as God, with his, my Lord, my God. The purpose, the whole purpose of the Gospel, as John himself tells his readers, is that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that is seen finally to be fulfilled in Thomas. So Thomas, in other words, isn't sort of the doubter that he has been made out to believe, but actually that true believer who we are called to imitate. And although that phrase he saw and he believed runs almost like a, an antiphon throughout all of John's Gospel about many other individuals too. It applies most typically to Thomas and I would suggest therefore to each one of us too today. So if I am saying that that story of Thomas is about faith, what is it about our faith that Thomas teaches us. Well, first of all, it makes it resoundingly clear that as in all matters of truth, or matters of understanding, intelligent questioning and searching are essential, and I would suggest not harmful to our faith and what it is that we believe. Faith isn't a crutch for the credulous or a comfort blanket only for the fearful. And on the contrary, it requires, I think, courage from us. And to have faith is to live in the presence of mystery, sometimes comforting, often challenging, but never complacent, I would suggest. And faith points us, indeed, into that direction of the ultimate mystery and to those ultimate questions about the source of our very existence <coughs> itself. Who are we? What are we here for? Who is God? And of course, they are questions which remain permanently and in principle beyond our intellectual reach. But in reverse of what most of us might assume, rather than empowering us out to reach out to God, faith renders us receptive to Almighty God reaching out to us. Because the source of our existence, Almighty God Himself, is a goal that we can never arrive at through our own efforts of will or our own intellect alone, but only by the will and intellect enlarged by love, God's love for us and God's reaching out to us. And in this particular episode 
today, John is also showing us that we don't believe alone or in a vacuum. John shows us that faith in the risen Christ is given in the context of and in the possession of a community. And that community, of course, is the church. Individualism may have become the ruling mindset of modernity and its causes of all of that we could debate for hours and hours and hours. But the church has always known herself to be a living community of faith. The bearer from generation to generation of a tradition, of a truth that has been received and handed on. That which I have received, I handed on to you, says St. Paul, speaking of the Eucharist which I spoke of a couple of weeks ago. And to believe is for we who are Christians is to be immersed into that tradition of faith which has been safeguarded and transmitted by the living church. The Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles of which Thomas is one as we recite every week in the creeds. But this gospel also makes it plain that the truth in which we believe and to we are called to witness isn't a relic of the past, but a truth that we can know and believe here and now. And we witness or fail to witness to the risen Lord whom we know here and now, not only with our words, but with our lives too. Those first witnesses to the resurrection spoke not just of what they had seen, but how their lives were changed because of what they had seen. And the question for all of us may be today is do our lives testify to what we profess and believe? In the end, St. Thomas's profession of my Lord and my God is as much a profession of love as it is of faith. And this is because faith, like love, is the kind of knowledge that draws us deeper and deeper into itself. Which is why for all of us who follow Christ here today in this Minster Church, this community of faith, our goal must never be only to know about God not even only to know God, but I would suggest it is to know and to love God, just as we are known and loved by God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And to believe will then be to be overwhelmed by his presence, to be overwhelmed by his love for us, as St. Thomas was in his encounter, and as we can all be today, as we encounter and invite him to dwell within us in this service. I pray you are able to do that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Encouraged by our fellowship with all the saints, let us make our prayers to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Strengthen me, God. Guide your church to follow the example of St. Thomas and all your saints through the ages, and to witness with joyful praise and reverent worship. We pray for our Archbishops Justin and Stephen, for our Diocese of Bishops Pete and Sophie, our Archdeacons Jagger and Marmion. We pray for David, our Vicar, and for all who lead and attend services in our church. Lord, in your name. Yeah. Lord Jesus, we pray that all <coughs> nations may know the peace that comes from above. Drive out the evil which brings strife between the people. Give light to the dark places and fill the world with the knowledge of the truth. We pray for the people of Ukraine and pray that the war there will soon come to an end. We pray for people of all countries around the world where there is conflict and unrest. Be with them as they struggle with fear, hunger, and poverty. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, in all our relationships, in all our human communities, grant us mutual love that has no limits and seeks no advantage. We pray for all prisoners, especially those in the prisons of France this year. May they find a safe place to live on their release, so they will not be tempted to reoffend. We pray for all students as they finish their exams and prepare for the next stage of their lives. Be with them as they often have to make difficult decisions. We pray for all our communities who have the all in our community who have the power to influence others. The parents, teachers, youth leaders, and all those in the media. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, grant healing to the sick in mind and body, and skill to those who care for them. We pray especially for the staff and patient in the hospitals and care home in Doncaster. We bring before you all who have asked for our prayers at this time. For Isabel Stace, Isabel Pacheco, Angela, Sheila, Steve, Christopher, Alan, Jean, Ben, Emily, Sharon, Sienna, Sienna Esme, Anne, Wendy, Lauren, Janet, Sue, and Hannah and Christopher. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 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 Eternal Lord, <coughs> we give thanks to St. Thomas and for all who left us at Catholic Home in Lyon. Give us grace to honour their memory, not only with our lips, but in our lives. Make us worthy to come with them to eternal life in the heavenly glory. We pray for Ella Oliver and Jane Ronaldon, who have died recently, and for the young man who had been lying at the town centre yesterday. We pray for the 53 migrants who died in the truck in Texas, and all the poor suffering human trafficking. 
We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord. We're always with you. And also with you. Son, our Lord, 
For after his resurrection, he sent out his apostles and evangelists to preach the gospel to all nations and lead us in the way of truth. Himself, the chief cornerstone, he founded his church upon the apostles, firmly to stand forever as a sign of your holiness upon earth and a living witness to all in the way that leads to heaven. So, with angels, with archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we lift our voices to join their unending hymn of praise. The same way after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. 
As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. We thank you for granting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Thomas, St. George, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called for his sake. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs on your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may ever more dwell in him, and in us. Amen. 
Holy Spirit and the Apostles, with the wind from heaven and in tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. By the power of the same Spirit, strengthen us to witness to your truth and to draw everyone to the fire of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you service. There are uh, refreshments available and there is cake there, Mr. And I have seen it, so you, you, you must stay behind for that if you're able to do so and share in that. You will see that from your weekly sheet that there's a Cora Leaping song tonight and it's uh, Father Stephen Edmonds is actually uh, officiating and preaching at it. He's the Associate Archdeacon of uh, <coughs> the of Doncaster and West Doncaster. So if you're able to come, it would be good to support him and of course the choir who are here. And then I just draw your attention to the last two things that are on this uh, weekly sheet, which is about the autumn fair, which I mentioned last week. And again, if you can help in any way to sign up <coughs> for the crossing, there's a sheet there. And you'll also see, if you've read it already, that we are hoping to go back to our normal pre-COVID opening times and therefore we are looking for some new stewards in some way if you're able to help in some way with that then have a conversation with me or one of the church wardens or somebody who is a steward certainly and they can tell you what a joyful thing that is to be doing and how much they get out of it and if you're able to help in that way it would be good we are getting more and more people of course visiting now and we just need people to be welcoming those people as they come. Thank you.
be with you. And also <coughs> with you. God, who has prepared for you a city with eternal foundations, bring you with all the saints to the eternal and triumphant joy of that city and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.